Hi, my name is Eileen Sheesh and I'm a member of the HFSA Communication Committee and we have selected Dr. Uh, Josh Hare's presentation as one of the top presentations to uh, highlight actually at this meeting. So um, please tell me who you are, where you work and uh, what your role is at your institution. Thanks, it's great to be here. My, um, I'm Joshua Hare, I'm from the University of Miami Miller School of Medicine where I'm a, um, the Lewis Lemberg Professor of Medicine and the Director of the Interdisciplinary Stem Cell Institute. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, can you summarize the most important findings um, during your presentation today? Yes, yeah, so I spoke uh, this morning about uh, the, the state of the art of uh, cell-based therapy for congestive heart failure. The basic message I tried to convey in the talk was that we've had a wave of very informative phase two and phase one clinical trials that have been completed, and it's a very exciting time in the field because we've, we're in, a, in a, a point of time where we're awaiting data from a number of uh, larger clinical trials that were based on the earlier trials, including specifically the first phase three trial that's completed enrollment. So that's a very important step for any new therapeutic area to actually have phase three data awaiting. We don't know what it is today, but we know that the trial was successfully enrolled. The DSMB that monitored that trial allowed the trial to complete through enrollment. The uh, trial also has what's called an RMAT designation from the FDA, which is a regenerative medicine accelerated therapeutic designation. It's similar to an, um, an accelerated approval pathway. And so perhaps next year at this meeting, we'll be talking about what the, the results. Uh, results of those trial, that trial is. No, I think that's gonna be very exciting. I think for those who actually know a little bit about stem cells, but don't know a lot, I like if you can actually talk about um, you know what we've discovered so far about the different types of stem cells you had today discussed a little bit about the mesenchymal correct so um, for those that are not as knowledgeable right. could you actually provide more information so the field of cell based therapy has become broader than uh, the narrower uh, stem cell therapy and this has been an area of controversy in the field so when when a, if we're going to be purist and talk about stem cells there is the general idea that a stem cell should engraft and differentiate into the missing cell. However, as 20 years of research have led us to realize that cell-based therapy can do other things than engraft and differentiate, and that cells like mesenchymal stem cells have the capacity to create endogenous healing and endogenous repair, and that could be very valuable. So it's different from engraftment and differentiation, into new myocytes. But what we've learned in, in animal models and are hoping to replicate in the clinical setting is that mesenchymal stem cells can stimulate endogenous repair. The other very valuable feature of mesenchymal stem cell is that it has a pleiotropic mechanism of action. It's very powerfully antifibrotic. The most powerful antifibrotic agent we have available to us in all of medicine right now is the mesenchymal stem cell. It also is immunomodulatory stimulates neovascularization, and stimulates cardiac my endogenous cardiac myocyte proliferation. So those are very valuable features. They're different from what the initial hypothesis was, right. that the cells would engraft and differentiate and create what we now call remuscularization. They don't necessarily do that, but they still have a favorable effect on the phenotype of the damaged heart. And specifically, that 30 to 50% reduction in infarct size there's no, other, there's no other way yeah. to uh, achieve that. Uh, that is something that's been replicated by multiple groups around the world mm -hmm. in humans and in animal models. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. That really w is what caught my eye. Right. I was like, wow, if you could do that, then that's pretty right. incredible. So now what we're waiting for, the data we don't have yet, which will emerge from the upcoming trials, is does this lead to clinical improved clinical outcomes for patients. Yeah. There are hints that it does. In the early studies, there are uh, improvements in the Minnesota living with heart failure scores and the six minute walk distance. Again, seen consistently across small studies that are about 60 patient studies. So um, those of us who are deeply enmeshed in the field and know all the granularity of the data remain very optimistic about it and are fully supportive of the phase three trial that we're waiting for. So we hope at the next uh, HFSA meeting, at a late-breaking meeting, you share those results right. with us. <laughs> well, there's a, 
what I tried to, try to present this morning is that there's a couple of new trials yeah. that are um, w that we're waiting for. It's the, the Dream HF trial, the Concert HF trial, and the Elpis trial. The other thing I talked about this morning that I think is particularly important is that the remuscularization hypothesis is still alive. So there are two approaches to try to engraft and differentiate cells. One is to use embryonic stem cells. The other is to use induced pluripotent stem cells. And there are ma there's major funding and major efforts worldwide going into that. The thing that everybody who sh should understand at this time is that this is still at a preclinical stage. Those cells have not been used in phase one studies yet. And the first mm -hmm. studies that will be done with those types of cells will just be safety testing. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's been great okay. to have this opportunity. Thank you.